All right, another part. So let's just jump right into it. His nose is actually surprisingly well matched with his face, so we don't want to move that around too much. Just want to make it look better. Move this lump up a little bit higher. Actually, no, I like where it was. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and work on his eyes a little bit. Let's bring this up here. Okay. Um, another thing we should do. First of all, uh, let's bring this in a little bit. Let's that down. Oh, and the reason you want to go down levels when you move stuff around like that is because when you move in too much, you get you get weird stuff going on. But let's go ahead and make some forehead wrinkles. Let's go ahead and draw. Let's turn the size up a lot because you know got some weird stuff going on there. Actually, one thing I'd like to show you guys is um smooth stroke. And uh, what this does is uh it's kind of like ZBrush. It, you just do it like uh, like that. You just you have a lot more control over what you do. Actually, not really. <laughs> that wasn't. It worked a lot better with uh, tiny wrinkles like around his eyes. So we're just gonna keep that off right now. So let's just go ahead and let's bring the strength all the way up. Okay. So let's see how deep that's making them. It's pretty good. So we'll just keep going like that. Make four of these. Okay, so another thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and go into inflate, and we want to inflate the parts between. And then we're going to do what we've been doing is pinch. And pinch, uh, I guess the reason it makes things look good is because it, uh, it brings the vertices close together. And it doesn't get that weird jagged look because uh, the smoothing is better because they're closer. It's kind of like, uh, I guess, adding loop cuts, I guess. You know when you want to make things look a little smoother, you add a loop cut and it brings it together. I guess it's the same premise. Uh, but we'll keep pinching because uh, I still want some more. I want a really wrinkled kind of look here but we're gonna smooth it out and this is just for impressions we're uh, actually going to detail our uh, retopologized model again and convert that into a uh, normal map so let's go back into smooth and we'll just smooth that out some because I just want the impression of the wrinkles to be there Yeah, that's actually, uh, that's good. I just want a little bit of impression. Let's bring this in, because it looks like it's kind of a horn a little bit. Okay, now, um, hold on one second. I need to bring my mirror over so I can see the... Okay, I just need to see the ear to jaw ratio, because it's very uh, nifty to have a mirror uh, next to you when you sculpt, because you can kind of see where things are supposed to be. Okay, so usually when you sculpt, when you model, sometimes some people they like to bring an edge loop up here and then around the ear, so the ear would be right around here. So let's go ahead and draw size and up, strength down. Actually, let's scale in here. And we're just going to add a basic ear shape here. We're just going to add like a, a bump that kind of resembles an ear. We can't possibly model an ear with this low uh, amount of vertices. We don't have enough density. 
All right. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna then pick the grab tool. <laughs> it looks like he has headphones on or something. But we're going to bring the earlobe in here. Bring it closer in towards the top as well. If, uh, push it in towards here. Bring it in some more. Okay, we're just getting an impression of the ear. It's not going to look great because, uh, you know, it's just the impression. Like I keep saying. It's going to draw here and just, uh, start carving a little bit around just to make it look better. Let's go ahead and smooth it out though. And, uh, I'm going to draw your little right there. Okay, now we're just going to make it look good from front view. Okay, we want this to be a little more outward here and a little more inward there. Ears are kind of tricky to get, I have to admit. Okay, so now we're gonna, gonna draw, we're just gonna add a little bit of a resemblance of an ear now, just a little bit. Okay, just to get that little bit of a, just there. Oops. Still on draw. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this because uh, we're going to make the ear look good when we actually model it. And then it'll look much, much better. If you guys have any suggestions for, um, for tutorials or uh, if I should change anything with my tutorials, you know, feel free to send me a message or leave a comment. I'm very open to suggestions. And I will be uh, making a full, full character tutorial series, kind of like David Ward did, but uh, just a little different because it will be more like creature creation. Because uh, just to show the creative process as well. But I'm going to, I'm probably going to be making a very long DVD and probably selling it on making uh, modeling, texturing, rigging, and animating a character as well as probably modeling a whole scene and making a whole scene and compositing and things like that. Okay, that's about as good as we're gonna get probably. Just bring this up just a little bit more. Yeah, that's as good as we're gonna get. Do one more thing here and just make this ear, this uh, ear part here even. Yep, this is as good as we're gonna get for now. Let's just make it a little wider. And uh, yeah, because we just want to put in guidelines where to put the ear. So I'm smooth here and just smooth out this rigid part here. All right. All right, so there we added the impressions of the ears, and I think we're only gonna have one, about one or two more parts, and then we will be done. Uh, all right, so that's it for this tutorial, and be sure to watch the next part. All right, guys, thanks.